translation and Irish media after that without translation. First question, please. Can I just uh, quickly translate oh, yes, into German? Yeah. Um, also am Anfang die uh, lokale Presse bitte die Fragen stellen und dann wird es uh, mit dem irischen Vertretern weitergehen. Okay. Uh, question for Mr. O'Neill. Uh, since ages, there are two uh, Irish players from, from the Irish League in the squad. What does that mean for, for the team and also for the league? Um, well, I think, I think it's, I, hopefully it's a boost for the league and obviously for the players themselves. Uh, the two players have deserved their call-up because probably because of their exploits in the European football, um, Dundalk, uh, their team have done fantastically well, still fighting in the, the Europa League, so uh, I think it's, it's a great boost not only for them but obviously for the uh, League of Ireland back home. Also die Frage war, ähm, dass zwei Spieler aus der irischen Liga mit dabei sind und äh, was äh, Mr. Neil davon hält und ob das, äh, ja, was das für die Liga auch aussagt. Und er ist der Meinung, dass es äh, sehr positiv ist für die irische Liga, ähm, aber auch natürlich für die Spieler und die haben es beide verdient, dass sie mit dabei sind. Und Dundark hat natürlich auch ähm, sich sehr, sehr stark verbessert, ein sehr starkes Team und äh, ist auch in der Europa League dann sehr, sehr stark vertreten. Next question. Nächste Frage. Yes. Sorry. First of all, uh, welcome to Vienna, Coach O'Neill. Thank you. Uh, the Austrian, the Austrian uh, coach, Mr. Calder, said um, it's an important game, but um, it's still a long way to go. If you will win tomorrow, you will be six points ahead of Austria. Uh, how, how, I see, how, how do you see the situation, and do you see the pressure is more on the Austrian team or on the Irish team? Well, first of all, I, I agree with him because I do think it is um, still a long way to go. I know it's um, the qualification group is condensed into 10 games, but um, there are a number of teams um, who I think are qu quite closely matched. I think that um, I think uh, from our own experiences in um, in uh, uh, when we're trying to qualify for the Euros. Uh, our fourth game we played, we lost against Scotland and um, so it left us with a long time to think about the next match coming up but I think um, I think for us then we fought, we've obviously we battled on and we got through while Austria went through the qualification group so easily. I think that um, I don't think it's the end uh, for Austria. They, obviously, they will be disappointed if that's the case. But um, I think that um, Austria were one of the teams I thought were pretty strong to begin with. They might be disappointed at losing in Serbia, but that's still a difficult game. And I'm sure Austria will feel if they can win their home games, they are right in it. They also had a big win in Georgia, which I think will, be, will prove to be very difficult for teams going there. Excuse me. Ja, die Frage war, dass äh, Herr Koller vorhin gesagt hat, dass es natürlich ein sehr wichtiges Spiel ist, aber auf der anderen Seite auch noch viele Spiele zu spielen sind. Ähm, und wenn jetzt Irland gewinnen würde, dann wären sie natürlich sechs Punkte vor ähm, Österreich. Und ob äh, wo der Druck mehr liegt bei Österreich oder bei Irland. Ja, ich äh, bin der gleichen Meinung wie Herr Koller. Ähm, es sind noch einige Spiele zu spielen. Und ähm, für uns war es damals auch schwierig, als wir gegen äh, Schottland verloren haben und dann eine Pause hatten. Aber wir haben es dann im Nachhinein doch noch geschafft, uns zu, äh, zu qualifizieren. Das heißt, wir kennen die Situation auch. Deswegen bin ich auch der Meinung, dass es für Österreich auch nicht das Ende wäre, wenn sie jetzt sozusagen nicht, äh, nicht gewinnen würden. Natürlich waren sie enttäuscht nach, nach äh, dem Spiel gegen Serbien, dass sie verloren hatten. Auf der anderen Seite hatten sie natürlich auch einen, einen guten Gewinn ähm, in, gegen Georgien. Und auch da zu gewinnen ist nicht so ganz so leicht. Und Österreich hat ein starkes Team auf jeden Fall. Question for Seamus Coleman. Obviously, you know some uh, players, some Austrian players from the Premier League. How do you rate him and what do you expect from the game? Yeah, it's, it's obviously going to be a, a very tough game. Uh, we found it uh, difficult to come here in the past. And 
obviously the, the players that we're aware of is I've played against a few times is Zinatovic, who's a, a good player, a strong player, and obviously they've got uh, David Alaba, who's a, a world-class player. So um, they've got top players, and they're going to be a very tough game for us tomorrow. But uh, we're looking forward to it. Die Frage war ähm, an Mr. Coleman, ähm, er kennt ja einige Spieler aus der Premier League auch, ähm, was er von ihnen hält, ob er sie stark einschätzt. Ja, auf jeden Fall, sie sind sehr starke Spieler. Zum Beispiel ist David Alaba ist ein Weltklasse-Spieler. Dementsprechend ähm, ja, erwartet er ein sehr, sehr äh, anstrengendes und schwieriges Spiel morgen. Martin, have you seen a weather forecast for tomorrow? Because there's apparently 20 centimeters of snow due to roll in. You've had some bizarre weather in other qualifiers. Just wonder how much of a concern that would be. And also for Seamus, you know, how do you feel when you look out your window before a game, see snow or fog or heavy rain that you've had before? You go first. <laughs> um, I, I, I didn't, wasn't aware of, of that tomorrow, but you know, as, as footballers, you've just got to adapt to the conditions, I think, in our, in our last game. The, the weather, it was... Heavy rain, and we didn't. There was some talk of getting against Serbia of it being possibly called off, but uh, it wasn't. And I think you've just got to adapt to whatever the conditions are and, and keep our focus no matter what it is. Um, Martin, can I just ask how? Sorry, Pat, you can. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, like Seamus, I wasn't aware of the forecast. You say how much snow? 20 centimeters. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Well, might be for an interesting game of football then. No, no. I didn't know, wasn't it? Pardon? We might the orange ball. Hmm, it may well be back. What time did they say it might fall? I think it's overnight, yeah. I Tonight? Yeah. Tonight? Okay. Apparently not in doubt for the game, but I mean, obviously the manager you well, I'm very disappointed, and you didn't tell us about the weather forecast. Do you mean the weather? Or do you mean Ian? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, suppose I, I suppose it has followed us around. Yeah, well, um, yeah Bosnia, Bosnia was a strange night that you bring it up, Patrick. It was, um, it was strange because um, just as we were going off at half time in the game, the fog started to come down there. And I think um, in the second half it was difficult, um, I must admit. And uh, I thought that there was a stage they were going to call the game off. And um, then the match in Serbia, the night, as Seamus has mentioned, the day before, it was, um, it was raining very strongly, very hard. And, uh, and we woke up to the, the talk about the possibility of it being called off. Now, the pitch cut up very, very quickly indeed, but the game went on. And so, should I be, be surprised if there's snow here? Probably not, you know. Um, Martin, can I just ask about how James McLean is? I mean, Roy seemed slightly concerned about him earlier in the week, and just in the context of the players you have missing, you know, Shane Long and Daryl Murphy, would you be looking for James to take the sort of same attack and responsibility that he did in, in Moldova last month? Well, uh, James is improving greatly, thank thankfully. Uh, he was... Um, he, um, he was in great discomfort uh, over the weekend and he came to us on Monday evening and, uh, and it wasn't great, but um, a lot of good work by everyone, including James himself, um, has, um, he's um, pretty good. He trained yesterday. We didn't do a great deal, but he trained yesterday and I, I expect him to do something tonight. And if that was the case, he would declare himself fit. It would take a, a James is one of those that has, um, uh, if he is feeling bad, he would definitely be feeling bad if that's the case. But um, thankfully, he's, he is recovering, and that's good. As, as um, regarding your second point, yeah, he can play. Uh, he has uh, done exceptionally well. Somebody um, asked me the last time about maybe would he take over the what would be considered the John Walters mantle of this particular tournament. I don't know is the answer. But um, he scored a couple of goals in the last game, did exceptionally well. And, um, but John Walters, when, John, when Shane Long went off, John Walters went to centre forward and, um, and um, 
played excellently in laid off the goal for, for James, did well. So we've got uh, a number of alternatives, we think. A uh, question for Seamus. Hi, Seamus. Um, the, the, the row between Ireland and Everton over the injury to players or otherwise has kind of overshadowed the week to some degree. Do you feel a bit caught in the middle by that, Seamus, and uh, in an awkward position as a result or not? No, not at all. Um, I'm, I'm not interested in making headlines about that topic whatsoever. My only concern is training this evening with Austria and uh, again preparing for Austria tomorrow and the game against Austria, and that's, that's my only concern. Martin, um, just looking, uh, watching the Austrian team uh, in action in recent games, they can go from looking quite ordinary to excellent um, in within the same game. Mm -hmm. You've spoken before about players knowing their job and knowing their role on the, on the on the pitch. Would concentration be a major factor in a match like that, where especially the, for the players who are marking the the marquee players? Well, uh, yeah, I think concentration is very very important anyway for us and. Um, I take your point entirely that um, uh, suddenly they can spring into action and look a very good side. I think they are a very good side. I think that they will be. They they've come home from the Euros very disappointed because they would have expected to have done better than that. That said, they drew with the team that eventually won the competition, Portugal, and um, so I think they're making going to make amends. They started off brilliantly, as I've mentioned just earlier. That win in Georgia will be will be will prove to be a very, very big win indeed. And uh, uh, and the game against Wales, I don't think... I think that with Wales being riding high, I think that... I don't think any of us were really surprised about a draw there. And losing in Serbia is... Um, would not be the end of the world. I've said it before. So Austria are one of those sides. I think we all thought will be there, thereabouts at the end, re regardless of tomorrow night. Martin, just on following on on that, Austria's record at home has been something like they've only lost once in the last 11 competitive games. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of expectancy, you know, what, how would you see that? I mean, would a draw, would you consider a draw a terrific result? Well, I, th I, I mean, I've said here in the past, I don't know how you actually play for a draw for all these years that I've been involved both as a player and as a manager. And I don't think I've ever, ever heard a manager, regardless of how brilliant or how mediocre he was, going to a game and thinking that uh, beforehand about how to play or how to plan for one. Um, us remaining unbeaten, um, let's say, over the Christmas period and going into, um, going into March, would naturally give you a boost. There's no question about that. And um, any point away from home, in international football, club football, European football, was still considered even by the very, very best sides at club level and international level to be a good result. And um, so it will be difficult. But I have said, regardless of tomorrow night, our destiny is, um, is in 2017, really, uh, with games. By tomorrow night, we, have, um, we will have played three games away from home and one at home. And we will level that up sometime in June. So those games, this is still a very important game, don't get me wrong. And our attitude is to go out and try and be in the front foot, try and be positive and try and go for it. Which we tried to in Serbia, come away with a draw. Which we tried to in Georgia, we only had great goal in the second half. Got us a very hard-earned victory. And Moldova conceding a poor goal just before half-time. We fought back in the second half. So we've got plenty of spirit about this team. And just very quickly for Seamus, you of course were involved the last time we played here in Austria and it was a late David Alaba goal. And again, uh, at the Aviva Stadium, we conceded a late goal to draw that game. How much are you guys aware of you know, the need to you know, concentrate for the full 90 minutes? Yeah, I think in any game you, you obviously have to concentrate for the full 90 minutes, but definitely the, that, that World Cup qualifying campaign, the, the, the Austria games were, were pivotal really and, and you know, we conceded late goals in the games and it was tough to take at the time, you know, but I think we've moved on a lot, a lot since, that, since, since them games and, um, you know, the, the Euros in the summer and qualifying for the Euros has, has really brought, brought this group together and, you know, uh, obviously 
coming away from here to the point wouldn't wouldn't be a bad result. But the lads that we got, we we truly believe that we can we can beat teams. And and uh, as I said, it, when when you go out in the pitch with them lads, it's a privilege, and and you feel that you know you're going to be in it till the very end. Okay, last few questions, please. Martin, you, you spoke there about wanting to play on, on the front foot. Um, whether he starts or possibly comes off the bench, what can Harry Arter do to add to that? I mean, he's, he hasn't been available for a lot of competitive games, but clearly he's a player in form. Um, well, it's uh, yeah, uh, he has uh, he has been doing pretty well um, in for Bournemouth, and um, I think he's fit. He's um, I think he came off for um, it might, might have been tactical reasons there in the game that the, they lost at the weekend, but um, he came in. He's raring to go, and uh, I just think overall, and, and I, I wouldn't start just putting something down to one particular game. It'd be great if if he's selected that he um, he does well. That would be lovely. But over the period of the next what next two years, you're hoping to see the very best, and you're hoping that he will be able to add something to our squad. With, uh, with regards to Roy's comments uh, earlier in the week, is there a danger that players can become caught in the middle like Seamus or, or are you concerned there is a, a slight issue there with Everton? No, absolutely not. I think Seamus explained it. I don't think Seamus, uh, Seamus is not caught up. He's here. He wants to play. James wants to play. I think it was, uh, yeah, it was a continuation at the time, but I think, seriously, I think it's, it's over now as far as we're concerned. And... Um, and I think just um, let, let us let, seriously just let us move on. I think that's that's the case. I put James into just to explain to you very briefly. I put James into a provisional squad because he thought that he might get through if that was the case. I said to him, there was always, and I think I even mentioned to to the lads here, always the probability that he wouldn't make it. That, that and because of a hamstring. I wouldn't really want to risk him if the only game that he was going to play was coming straight into us with a hamstring. The other time that he played before, it was um, he had recovered from the injury, and the point was made that he was in, actually in Everton's squad two days later, having trained that morning. But as far as I'm concerned, it's all over. Uh, um, end, end of story. And um, I'm hoping that uh, if James is available again in March time, that he would be that he would be selected. So I don't think the players have uh, f f caught in that trap at all. And, uh, and I think it would be for club or country. I don't think it would be right for players to be caught in that. Are you fit, Seamus? Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I think that, um, yeah, I think he would join the list. I should put him on into Trump, first of all, you know, say congratulate him, see how well he's doing, and one of commiserations to Hillary. And then somewhere down the line, I think we should go with it. Yeah. And there's also a possibility that someone might call me as well, too, you know. Possibility. Uh, Last question. Sorry, Martin, just to, the, the away games... I mean, the away game so far, um, Belgrade was, was odd, not just, just because of the heavy rain, but because the ground was largely deserted or half full. Moldova was quite an interesting, uh, quite an intimate stadium. There's a sort of big occasion feel about this game tomorrow night from the point of view that it's a 51,000 capacity crowd. Mm -hmm. the, the cliche is that that makes things more intimidating, or alternatively, for a visiting team, is that more inspirational? What, what's your take on playing in these full houses and these, in these big nights and for this team? particular yeah well I, I wasn't I wasn't really really sure why um, um, why the um, Serbian national side wasn't well supported I think there is something at this moment but I think that uh, I think their particular fans feel as if the national side owe them something and uh, but they will be coming back in numbers now and um, what is um, yeah I, I agree with you a little intimate stadium in, in Moldova wasn't completely full either. Uh, tomorrow night is a big game, and I think big players like the man to my left uh, rise to the occasion. He's played a he's played a lot of big games in the last uh, few seasons of his career, and um, and he is uh, capable of inspiring players to to big uh, to big games. So I think it's one of those things that you should look forward to. I know it's the most cliched phrase in the world. But that is what you're in the game for. That is exactly what you're in the game for. Games like tomorrow night at international level. 
and Champions League games if it's at all possible during your career as a player or a manager. Okay. Just Thank you. Um, how much will it remain tomorrow if you can't believe it and become good? Yeah, I think uh, even before before the game tomorrow, we, we believe we can qualify, as I, as I touched on earlier. It's a great group of lads, and a group of lads that I really enjoy meeting up with and playing with, and you know that they leave it all on the pitch, and um, definitely a win tomorrow will, will put us in the direction we want to be going, but as the manager said, I think 2017, there's going to be a lot of football to be played, but we're going into the game tomorrow wanting, wanting to win and, and show that, that we really want to qualify out of this group. And James, this time last, in the last campaign, we went to Scotland and lost that game. But as, as players, does that sort of stew on your mind a bit over the winter? I know you've club games, but if you went to Christmas on the back of the feet, does it kind of play in your mind a bit? Uh, that one in particular, yeah, it was it was it was hard to take at the time, definitely. Um, but we, we we had to dust ourselves down and go again. And uh, I think even the summer game against them in Dublin was was even tough the, the, when they got the equaliser. But as I said, we've got we've got a really good group of lads, and, and as I said, we'll keep going till the end, no matter what. But uh, obviously, we'll be wanting to win tomorrow night. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you.